I'm Howard Lee on behalf of the King of the Ring, Christopher Cronus. Welcome to this extravaganza. We thank our many major sponsors. Well, welcome to the Sports and Entertainment Centre here in Melbourne, Victoria. And seven great bouts tonight of kickboxing on the card. And it's a Christopher Cronus spectacular. Nick Zachariah joins me tonight. Uh, the two to open up the uh, proceedings tonight. And this is a four two-minute rounder, uh, a super middleweight, USA rules. Run one. And this promises to be a bottler. The first of seven, the entertainment center. This is world title night here in Melbourne. Curtis. Very important early to turn around and get the chance to dictate. Yeah, that was a little low, wasn't it? A little low. You'll find Curtis very good with the hands and with the feet. And it's quite obvious to see spinning back kick, just a little off target. But uh, I don't think you have to... Uh, oh, that one nearly found the mark. He's got a kit of them. Got a kit of kicks. A, uh, good hands. And boy, the blue kind of order. Uh, Murdoch, I should say, uh, just prepared. Remember he puts a warning on. Just prepared to uh, right side him up. Kick was good, but uh, he slipped down on centre ring. I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit more about that later too, Nick, that centre ring, because it does worry me. Inside leg kick, nearly found the mark there. Murdoch. It's a nice combination there by Curtis. Nice combination. They are kicking to the thighs, but it seem, seems like to me they're kicking to the legs today. So I'm not quite sure why I was told otherwise earlier. Easy to have a look at Murdoch. Uh, the white skin, you can see the red welts starting to come up. Good left and uh, right combinations there from, uh, from Curtis. Murdoch prepared just to stand in the centre of the ring and make Curtis come up to him. Left hand pokes out the right. Not a lot of damage done. No weight behind it. And for some reason, Curtis looking to his corner. You see Curtis again, very, very confident at the moment. Actually, that, uh, that backfired on him, actually. Yeah. Did. Yes, it did. Just well him, catching him on the back of the fly. Interesting first round. How do you see it? Very interesting. Actually, uh, Robert Murdoch, I think he might be just carrying him this round, just taking it nice and easy. The, the matting today is, 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 is a bit slippery, especially with the pads the boys have on their feet. Well, the Rossi might get worked over time tonight. Yes, they might. I'm, I'm sure they will. This is round two of four. Curtis in the black trunks, Murdoch in the blue. And as Nick Zachariah mentioned beforehand, perhaps uh, Murdoch just uh, taking his time, but Curtis letting fly. And that spinning back kick, that's the, uh, the second one that's worked for him. Very, very nice combination from Curtis. He's a very strong fighter, nice moves, and steps right out of the way, puts it in and moves back. Kicking to the inside leg of Murdoch. Of course, a lot taller, has the advantage of reach. Murdoch, stocky. Murdoch seems to be very flat-footed. Very flat-footed, he should be, should be more on his toes. Curtis, it is, using the hands. Off target, looking for that spinning back kick again. And when they work, Nick, they work to uh, perfection. But they've got to find the mark. Not much point to expelling a lot of energy and going nowhere. Yeah, looking for the side of the thigh. Unfortunately, a lot of fighters do. They, they seem to throw uh, combinations that don't count. Sometimes you're put in that predicament in, in the ring and you have no choice but to throw combinations. You've got to keep your uh, opponent off you. See, uh, Murdoch's getting tired. He's getting tired. Curtis, doing all the work. They head on points so far for mine. Means nothing. You've only got to walk into one. And Curtis, Jane. pushing him back on the right. Oh, good left and right hands. Now he's starting to work on him. And kicks to the back of the thigh. And just having a look at the back. And Curtis is right though also. There's one huge black welt. So Murdoch's found the mark also. And just a little bit of blood coming from the nose of Murdoch. Curtis. Those round leg kicks. Very strong, Curtis. Very strong with his kicks. Very strong with his combinations. His certainly going to help me out. Round two. This has been a good fight. First of seven on opening night. Oh, well, Tarzan night, let's call it, down here in Melbourne and Victoria. Full of energy. You see him dancing round, and he's in there. Doesn't want to waste no time. The third of four. Kick from Murdoch, fine. But Curtis answers. 
with a good left jab. Good body kick. And Curtis, it was a bit of a cross from around leg kick and also looking for that front kick, but it didn't find the mark. And Nick, these boys are throwing a bit of leather in here. Yeah, they are. The, the boys are very tough. Murdoch's uh, popping some good, good wax, but he, he's staying there. He's standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with uh, Curtis. That front leg kick of Curtis, he's just got to be very careful. I notice he's very laxadaisy about it. He'll push it out. And, of course, if it doesn't find the mark, you're so vulnerable. That's the stink. Left and right hands on there. Comes back and catches him. Anything you can give me, I'll give you back. And I reckon that might have stunned Curtis a fraction. I think so. It sort of certainly pushed him back a bit. Murdoch's getting very, very, very confident compared to earlier rounds. And he's, it seems to be doing a bit of chasing, a little bit flat-footed as a fighter. Almost seems to have a little bit of cockiness about him, Murdoch. So I'm just going to wait for that opening. Bam, there he comes again. And as I said before, you get lazy with the kick and you can see what Curtis happened. They've just got tangled up in the ropes and you leave yourself wide open because there's no balance. Spinning back kick. Oh, good combination. That was good balance and poise from Curtis. Boy, that working underneath. And Curtis quite content to have him back on the ropes. Trying to pick him off, but he's tough. Murdoch in the blue tracks. Murdoch definitely is a tough boy. And the hands of Murdoch just dropping a fraction of court one. Has a bit of a right smile as to say, OK, I'll pay that. But I'll give you another one in a moment. Round three. The third of four. Good round. I still give it to Curtis. Yep. Fourth and final Fourth round. And, final. and this is for the Victorian title. Super middleweight. USA rules. Nick Zachariah with me at centre ring. Nice, nice, nice kick to the thigh by Curtis there. You can see that Murdoch's a little bit tired, but he's still got a lot of strength in him, but he's a little bit tired. Very flat-footed. I can't believe how flat-footed he is. Yeah, I, I, I'm very surprised for a fighter to be fighting flat-footed. Well, you see Curtis moving around. He's very, very light on his feet. Very fit. Very fit. Murdoch has the... Uh, well, gives you the impression that he's almost front on at you. Which, of course, uh, gives you a fair range to hit. Seems and, to... and Curtis Moore side on as soon as he moves in all the time. Murdoch seems to be waiting just for that chance Ooh, to throw that. that one was a bit low. Yeah, well, I felt that down here. But... Uh, Right hand from Curtis. Good hands. Kick from Murdoch finds the back of the thigh. And I get the impression that Curtis is just quite content to do enough work because I think he knows he's got the points. And just standing back. Murdoch's really going to have to pull something right out into the last 30 seconds. Off with left hand. That comes right between the gap there of uh, Murdoch. I said before the hands were starting to come down a little bit lower. Left, right, right over the top. No damage done on the ropes, though. Now, Jared, now, let's do it! Close. I think that's about all. A lot of... Uh, just whisked a little bit of blood off the nose there of uh, Murdoch. About the corner, looking for a knockout. They're calling for a knockout. You can hear it. And Curtis... I think it's going to run out of time. I think we're going to last it and does. Got in count at the start of the night off here at the Melbourne Entertainment Centre, the glass house, I should say, down here in Melbourne. And that was for the Victorian title. Ladies and gentlemen, by unanimous points, and the new Iska Super Middleweight Champion of Victoria, Hitman Jared Kutte. Of course, this is the Ladies Australian Muay Thai title tonight. And out of the blue corner, we have Nathan Briggs. And out of the red corner, we have Alistair Gibb. So maybe tonight he'll, uh, he'll get another win, maybe not. We'll have to wait and see. Now, two big fellows in here. And this is a heavyweight. Five three-minute rounds. And we're talking a different rules, a different style of fighting again. 
Yeah, in this round of final, they will kick to the thighs and throw knees in into the to the abdominal region. Motai fighting is a totally different fight into straight out kickboxing. Oh, spinning back fist. But I know I was uh, told at the press conference that spinning back fists are out through the fights. But um, I saw Alistair throw one then, so what the judges do is something yet to be told. Well, there were shades of Stan Longanides coming flying through the air there, and that right hand coming over the top. Now, Longanides, of course, is, lacks a lot of height with a lot of heavyweights and has that thunderous right hand and gets airborne. It was interesting to see that Gibbs has come out with that straight away in this first round. Two superbly fit athletes, these two. And the pace just slowed a fraction. Left hand, loving left hand over the top there from Griggs. No damage done. Gibb and Briggs, a bit of a tongue twister tonight. Yeah, I'd say it is a tongue twister, and I'll tell you something else. Uh, I, I, I can certainly see uh, Alistair's hard work. I mean, what a physique on a man. He's so fit, so healthy. But yet that's not enough sometimes to beat a fighter. I've seen uh, very fit men get in the ring looking like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, but seen him fight guys. Nathan Briggs. This crowd loving this, starting to warm. I don't think I've seen such a bigger crowd here at the Glass House in Melbourne and Victoria. And a good kit of punches from both fighters. Oh, the spinning back fist. If it would have found the mark, could have done some damage. And good leg work. Great leg work. In uh, Muay Thai fighting, they usually do use uh, back fist and elbows, but there's no elbows been thrown yet, but there's been plenty of back fists and plenty of spinning wheel kicks. These guys are very fit, very healthy. They train very hard, six days a week, these guys. are in the gym up to four hours a day at times. And their diets are important at times, but other fighters don't really mind too much what they eat. Interesting to have a look here, Nick. Both fighters with a very wide stance, and yet no fighter really working at the inside of the leg. There's plenty of, uh, plenty of gap there. Although I've just... Uh, Almost the legs brought down at the back there of uh, a Gibbs. I'm just noticing there that uh, Gibb it is that has got a few welts on the inside and on the top of the thighs. So maybe uh, the mark's being found. Round one, what is round one, interesting first round. Thought they might have started sizing one another up again because of almost the start of their five rounder again. Spurred back kick. That found him flush on the jaw. And Briggs says, I'm OK. And the lights come back on in full. And walks straight up. Spinning back fist. Can't afford to have that left hand down. No, you've got to keep that, you've got to keep that hand up. You've got to keep that hand up. For an 18-year-old, he's taken a bit. And is quite prepared to give it back as well, too. Oh, good kick. That one found the left thigh there of, uh, of Alistair Gibb. And this is a good comeback. This is a real good comeback from the 18-year-old. Right hand. Oh, the setting backwards. No damage. And he was quite happy to finish it off, too. Yeah, he was very eager to jump on top of him, but no, he's, putting, can't. he's putting a compulsive count on him. So, Alastair Gibb, the second round in two halves. Briggs it was in trouble, senses a bit of victory. And he can smell it. Now, Gibbs, going to have to be careful here. The kid's got a, a rush of adrenaline. Now, he can't afford. He's got to stand back and pick his mark. Gibb in a little trouble, a little wobbly on the legs. Young, oh, right hand, he's gone. Good night. Now let's see what the referee does here. Puts him into the neutral corner. And that was a classic right hand. A classic right hand. It was a, it was a great right hand by uh, Briggs. It was a very strong right hand. And he did follow up with the left. But they're back in there again. I don't think Alice is going to cope for the rest of this. Fight. And that was a slip. Alice seems a little bit dazed. Kick a little low. The left hand. He's got some power in those shoulders. Gibbard is standing, trading blows with him. And for me, walks into a left hand. 
right hand over the top and again to the neutral corner I'll be curious to have a look at this on, uh, on replay because this has been an enormous comeback from Nathan Briggs and the 18 year old now working on the legs and cop one a little low again he'll have to go to the neutral corner wants to keep going no I'm okay Nathan Briggs very hard at it he doesn't want to give him any any time and the crowd have come alive Gibb and Briggs Gibb it is and he's going to have to take this fight right up to him because Briggs has got a bit of a sniff now with my tie, we mentioned before you can use knees and you can see both boys trying to use the knees left hand flicks out there onto, uh, onto Gibb and he's trying to spin Briggs around in onto the ropes that's fairly evenly matched and Gibb for the first time now really starting to take this fight up what a shock kick oh that flying right hand we spoke about it in the first round yeah we did and he certainly clobbered him with that but he doesn't seem to bother Nathan at all I reckon this has stung him into action I got Darren Hedgecock right over my shoulder at the moment talking to him trying to get him motivated and I don't think there's too much he has to do I think uh, he's motivated enough Briggs the blonde hair you can hear Hedgecock over my shoulder I can see Nathan is trying to set Alistair up I think he's going to set him up with a big crunch I'm not quite sure but I think that right's going to come around spinning back fist the right one flush to the side of the jaw but have a look at the kid standing there hasn't hurt him cast iron jaw that's why they call him nasty boy good front kick No, he's not going to step in. I thought he would have stepped in there. Front kick, down its mark. Well, a push kick. Spinning over the top. This is when Gibbs got to come in underneath. Once you fight his legs up in the air and off the mark, he's off balance. And I just get the impression at the moment that he might have spent his pennies, Gibb. I think uh, Alistair is uh, very confident this round. He's, he seems to be moving out. Right, just poking out the left hand and the right hand over the top. Very right, close. just a slip. You're right, though, I think, uh, Nick. You say just the confidence. It's just starting to ooze a little bit. Both boys out of breath. Both very tough. Hedgecock asking his fighter to throw that right hand over the top. And Briggs pushing him back onto the ropes. Try to use that back fist to, uh, to advantage. Good body kick. Inside leg kick. That time came from Briggs. Very tight, dropping his arms, very dangerous. He can cop all. And that one's stunning. As we said before, they can come from nowhere, fights over. Nick Hannafy has called it a night. Yes, he has, and Briggs is uh, definitely hurt. Very dangerous. Let's have a look at it on replay. Now, Briggs. We're starting to get on top. There's the kick to the leg. Again, block of shins, spinning, look, just caught him. And it's the old story. Drop the hands, looking for trouble. You can you can be in front all night, you can have the right kit of punches and the right leg movement all night, and you've just got to walk into one. And I'd say out of anything, or any of this kid's gonna get out of that fight, young neighbor Briggs, he'll learn something that for a hundred minutes of concentration it's got to pay off for you eventually i just say he probably had a little lapse of concentration and he's let give right back in like i was saying earlier you gotta you gotta keep your hands up and nathan started getting tired he did drop his hands in the last uh, few seconds of the round he started getting tired he dropped his hands and alistair came in and he dropped him what a well, fantastic I, show i had Briggs getting back on top but a new title australian muay thai title center ring is how it leads 51 seconds of round three and become the new Australian Mai Tai heavyweight champion, Alistair Al Capone.
for Scott Crawford. And I can tell you, wherever you're watching this card, no. this fight promises plenty. Now the blonde is Crawford, Greco with the dark hair. Can't distinguish them from their uh, from their shorts tonight. Both in the white trousers. And good sportsmanship. Crawford just making sure that Sam's okay. And that's about the only gesture of gentlemen in his ship that will be traded for a while. Oh, that one there is to the head. And Crawford immediately covering up. I don't think there was a lot of damage done, Nick. No, I don't think so either, but as you can see how powerful their kicks are. They, and they kick very hard to the body. Makes it very exciting when they don't have to kick to the head because they just let loose. Let body loose. Yeah. Yeah. Good kick to the back of the leg. And Greco, again. And we can see already under the eye of Crawford, that left eye is swelling up. And now whether, whether it was a knee or whether it was a kick. He actually caught him with a knee. Caught him with a knee. Sam Greco on top early. Crawford. And Greco caught him with a beautiful kick in the forehand. Spinning back kick. Ooh, that one came down the elbow. That would hurt. Greco has a look back. If it did hurt, he's not going to let anyone know. And as I said before, certainly interesting fighting. And very evident of what you said before, Nick, the power of the legs being able to just take the body out from underneath. Incredible power with the legs. These guys kick as hard as what a mule would kick. As you notice, they kick to the thighs, and they can leg sweep from what I was told. And Greco. Ooh. Knee coming right up, dragging Crawford down. And I thought for one moment he was going, not going to get up out of that, but he's up, Crawford. He's done. He certainly is. Three three-minute rounds. Greco it is. Right on top. And at the moment. And you can hear Greco in the corner as he flails. Spinning. Back kick. Comes back to Crawford. Oh, the axe kick. Actually. I thought that Crawford had slipped twice, but I noticed now he's going straight to the canvas, trying to look for cover. Yes, he is, and he certainly is. You see the power in this. And that's done the damage. It's all over. The head. Unbelievable. I think the young man's hurt. Greco. Yeah. Has done a little bit of damage here to uh, Bob Crawford. And Crawford at the moment, in front of us, he's okay. He's okay, but that uh, certainly took the lines right out. And it was a knee coming up there at Greco. And for one fleeting moment, I thought Bobby Crawford was going to be in a spot of bottom. But the doctor looking at him at the moment. Now let's have a look here, the spinning back kick. And this is where he leaves himself wide open. Greco again coming in, looking for the axe kick. And that's where Crawford dives for cover. And a couple of times when he dived was when Greco came over, dragged him from the top half of the body down, brought the knee up underneath and did the damage. Did the damage. Greco pushes him back into that corner again. Here it is, bring him down, and that's where you can see. Focus, focus.
An interesting bout we have between Take In and Paul Briggs. Earlier on, you saw the twin brother of Briggs in Nathan Briggs fight. And again, he will have his father in the corner. These boys, Baz, were from the boys saw me at the back. He's very fit, very, very fast. And uh, you're definitely going to see a good fight to, tonight. And these boys are going to really get it down. This is round one. And we're looking at five three-minute rounds. Little weights, plenty of speed, plenty of action. Coming up for round one of five. Paul Briggs from Australia. Round one. This is the prelude to the world cruiserweight title, then the big one of the night, the world super heavyweight title. Briggs, white shorts, kid tie in the yellow. Quickly letting Briggs know exactly what he's here to do. Good kick to the midriff. And a little Japanese fellow, and they're both holding on. Briggs trying to get through the guard of the ties. Can't do so. Very quick with the feet, the Japanese. Briggs trying to use his knees, dragging him down to no avail. Kick taken on the gloves. Left hand, ooh, knee to the midriff, about its mark. Kintai trying to come up. Clash of heads, a little bit of wrestling. And as we mentioned before, in reference to uh, to tie fighting, they can actually hold in. Yes, they can. They can do a lot of groping, which is called actually grappling. They grabbing each other, throwing knees into the body, as you can see there. Wrapping the hands around the head. Oh. This has the Japanese in a bit of trouble. Briggs has found the mark with a left and right combination. Come back again. And brought the knee up over the left hand again. But let me tell you one thing. These Japanese are tough. Spinning back fist. Off the mark. And again, Briggs trying to bring the knee up. And the whole idea is probably to grapple on and try and come up hard enough up underneath that ribcage. That is correct. The Japanese just caught up balance. The kick was good. Briggs back quickly. Beautiful combination there by Paul Briggs. But and Briggs again. He doesn't seem to be bothering the jack. He seems to be giving it each. He doesn't, he doesn't seem to be bothered by a very strong king tie. Very Actually, strong. it was a clever knee in there, Nick, from Briggs. He held on from the top and came up over the top with that left knee. And it caught the Japanese flush on the chin. Now he's going to take the legs from out underneath him. The idea there. You can do a little bit of damage underneath, all of a sudden the hands will drop. And he'll come over the top because he's got uh, he's got a good kick of a good kit of punches. The Japanese trying to move to the inside. Briggs over the top. The uppercut did a bit of damage. Now he got, starts to work with the knees. Walks into the left hand. But still stands. Briggs is hitting with everything. Very strong. Again. I reckon that's done some damage now. The Japanese not too sure where he is at all. Where am I? Hanabi says, thank you, you've had enough. The Japanese is saying he's OK. He doesn't want to throw it in, he's OK. But the referee has called it. Well, Paul Briggs is absolutely ecstatic. And that's uh, a sign of things to come. The Japanese is not too sure whether it's over, but it is. And Paul Briggs very very happy and it was interesting to note that he went straight across to uh, Bob Jones and at the moment you can probably see Paul Briggs bowing to his Japanese opponent but he hasn't got a clue what's even going on a lot of respect there shown by Paul a lot Briggs a lot of respect but what a fighter unbelievable in fact Kim Tai is a little bit oh, I should say stunned he's stunned by the decision now let's have a look at Briggs here you can see the uppercut coming in over the top or underneath now the left hand over the top the knee up underneath. Now watch this. There it is, flush to the jaw. Yes, right back. Come on, give right Left hand, oh, straight through. And Ladies and gentlemen, as I said before, the lights went out. In two minutes, 55 seconds of round That's one. Did it. Two minutes, 55 of round one. The victor, Paul Briggs. Let's go ringside, Howard Lee. The Hoofrican, Paul Briggs.
Mr. Graham Burke to present the ball with the trophy. Sponsors Village Roadshow for this particular fight. A bit away. No, 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 no title, no. Title. This is the World Cruiserweight title at stake. And on screen is William Noor. Ricky Nicks in the corner. And this is USA Rules 12 two minute rounds. And this is the prelude to the big one. Tosca Petridis will be in the other corner. And he has the support of everybody in Victoria, everyone in Australia. And Melbourne are out in force tonight here at this entertainment centre. Our fellow judges. John Pascusi, George Zachariah, Australia, when the bell tolls, stepping up for his second World Championship match from Melbourne, Victoria, Mr. Joe Lanciana. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is for the International Sport Karate Association Junior Cruiserweight Championship of the World, light cruiserweight. In the blue corner, proudly wearing the American colors, from Lake Charles, Louisiana, United States of America, with Ricky Nix in the corner, scaling 83.6 kilograms. He's had 48 bouts, 38 wins, 10 losses, 18 by knockout. He is the undisputed Iska Muktai heavyweight champion of the United States, the Ragin' Cajuns. Would you welcome from United States, William? No! In the right corner, with Paul Firefield, his mentor from Avondale Heights, Victoria, Australia, wearing gold trunks with white piping. 22 bouts, two losses, one draw. Holder, WKA and Iska Commonwealth, Australian and Professional Karate Council, Super Middleweight Champion of the World, Three world titles. Can he add the fourth hit this evening? Scaling 83.6 kilograms. Puska, the Terminator, Ed Reed. Well done. Howard Lee, your ring announcer there, and uh, not hard to see at the moment. Perhaps uh, Nick, who the crowd is here to support. And they're definitely here to support uh, Tosca Petridis, I believe. Well, Tosca Petridis carrying the hopes of Australians, and Stan Longanides will be carrying the hopes of it a little bit later on when he comes up against Hosaki Sataki. William Noor, a formidable opponent, and of course uh, he does have the law on his side. Yes, he does actually. He's a criminal investigator. For of course, the... we're talking about uh, Ricky Nix, who's in his corner. That's that's correct. He works for the Criminal Investigation Sheriff's Department in... Uh... Get your tongue around that one. Calicasu, Sioux, oh, Parish Calica. Sheriff's Office, I think it is. Thank you for saving me, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do for the purpose of the exercise. Well, this is 12 two-minute rounds. We've seen the USA rules in the Victorian title earlier on tonight. Just refresh their memory. William caught 30 years uh, old, 6 foot uh, 3 inches, started karate at uh, 14, he's a uh, black belt at 17, studies judo, taekwondo, shotokan, nikido. The three is at 27 years of age, 
and holds three world titles, the PKC World Super Middleweight title, the WKA World Light Heavyweight title, the ISKA World Light Heavyweight title, and the boys are here to rumble. Madridis in the yellow shorts. Gore it is in the American colors. And pretty cagey. Leading, leading with that left hook. And Madridis has got that round leg kick working already. The whole idea, of course, uh, this type of fighting now, as you can see the Brees there already starting to work on that left leg of the American. As we've said earlier in the night, if you can start to do a bit of damage downstairs, the hands invariably drop from upstairs, and that's when you can come in and do the damage. Definitely, and the Tosco will definitely uh, keep kicking that leg. He'll keep working on that leg. And we've seen actually Tosca a little bit stronger, a little bit more bulkier than when we last saw him here in Melbourne. This is the cruiserweight title at stake. And has fought many preludes to world title fights here in Victoria and overseas. William Cole looks like his right leg is a little bit uh, hurt. I just saw him throw a kick out, caught uh, Tosca Petrides on the left shin and actually saw his face. Oh, the Petrides has told the American I'm here for business. It's set for 12. Joe Lanciano puts the count on William Noor. And I've said it before, we get time in a moment. No Sanchez of Joe Lanciano, a very colourful character, and uh, I think the bell has saved the American. We might be able to catch that on replay very, very shortly. Round two coming up. Tosca Petrit is a good start. And as I said before, probably a little bit bulkier than when we've last seen him. Yeah, I, I, I will agree with you there. He has put on a little bit more weight. He's a uh, a lot healthier than he was in his last fight, but William Call, very awkward fighter, I think. Um, his style's very, very different to what I've seen uh, in the past. A lot of the Americans, we can see, see Cor here now, lifting that left knee and the left leg up all the time, looking for the shin block to come across all the time. So, you know, he must be definitely worried with what Petridis can do in the uh, in the kicking region to the thigh. Again, just the referee was standing in the road there, but we can see the power that Petridis can generate. And you'll see him lift that left leg up all the time, looking for the block. Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll definitely see uh, some hardcore action from Tosca Petridis second round. I can feel it in the air. Yeah. Yeah. Kicks a little bit low straight away. Petridis goes for the left leg. Oh, caught him. Beautiful left leg kick. Caught the American on the chin. Look how low the hands are. A poor. Now Petridis drops his. Drop the hands, and uh, again, inside leg kick. Looking for the spinning back kick, wasn't there. The American could see it coming, ducked underneath it. Tosca, flicking out. Left hand over the top of the American. Puts the on the jaw. Tosca finding range with the legs early. Continuing to work on that uh, American's left leg has got an enormous bruise on the inside of that uh, left thigh. So Madridis has caught him already underneath. Now works to the back of it. That front kick from the American. Looking for one for the midriff. And Madridis has caught him again on that left leg. Intent to work up underneath. Joe so Lanciano asking the boys to break and step back. Shin block. Both fighters. The pace slow, just a fraction in this second round. The flick. American undeterred. wants to continue. Joe Lanciano has a look. Fight on, he says. Well, that was a slip more than anything. The American covers up. The pride of the Yank certainly 
Won't come out here to go home after two rounds. Oh, I want to have a look at this one on replay. Pascal Petrides, a very angry man those last few seconds. Now that would be a sweet a flick kick you would ever see. I say the flick kick, here it comes, that's the first, the right hand comes under. Look how balanced he is. The American tries to push away. There is. As soon as you drop the hands, we've been saying it all night, work on the work downstairs, and the top story will come down to you. These guys got to learn to keep their hands up. They've got to learn to keep their hands up, Rob. Well, I don't know what Ricky Nix would be telling, uh, telling his fighter in the corner at the moment, but surely he'd be telling him to keep the hands up, and they're working overtime on that thigh, on that left thigh, of, uh, of course, and uh, you can see them there spending a bit of time with their fighter in the corner. And I'll watch the boys come into uh, the stadium tonight. And all the internationals were fairly confident they were bouncing around. They were looking for a good night. So far, both internationals have been in trouble. Can the American come back? Still plenty of time. Still a long way to go. And this will be... Tosca Petridis and his bark and he's uh, <laughs> looking down to us here at our commentary position. Well done, Tosca. I'm just looking at a few notes in front of me. Wants to move into conventional boxing early next year and has a bout against Jeff Hardy. And with those hands we've seen tonight, I think the hitman, I think, would be taking this fellow with a bit more caution. Let's have a look at it on replay. This is the blow that sent the American back home. Petridis on the left of screen. Noor looking for the block. Kick to the body, the upper portion. The hands up and wide. Over the top and perfectly balanced. Petridis. And the lights haven't gone right out, but there was enough there to say I've had enough. Tosca Petridis centering the world cruiserweight title holder. And that's now three world titles, WKA, ISKA, PKK, and now this one on top of it. Let's go center ring Howard Lee. 12 seconds into the third round, claiming his fourth world title, this time the ISKA World Junior Cruiserweight Championship, Tosca Henry! Fourth world title, ISKA, Oscar Petridis just took the ISKA, unbelievable performance. Just watching Ricky Nix uh, talking to Joe Lanciano saying, uh, good decision, well refereed. Now, we'll see what the American has to say. Ladies and gentlemen, come on, be very gracious with our very gallant Louisiana champion, William Law. William, your first time in Australia, you've been a pretty good opponent this evening. He hits hard, kicks hard too. I give him everything. Tough fight, tough guy, nothing I can say. I've been in Australia a week, I love it. Everybody's been great, I thank you all. Gracious loser, will you door? And goes over and uh, lifts up the champion. And uh, Tosca Madridis has earned the respect of fighters right around the what world. What a gracious man with Ricky Nix, his mentor, Ricky. How would you rate Tosca Pedridis on a world scale? You come from America, you know the scene there? How do you rate Tosca? I would say that's the reason why he's a world champion right now. Because he's tough. <laughs> you people have been very kind to us and we appreciate everything you've done. We've enjoyed our trip here to Australia and we hope to come back again. God bless you. Those words from Rick Nix. Now let's just listen to uh, Tosca Madridis. You dedicated this fight to a very dear friend whom you lost a month ago. Yeah, that's right. A good friend of mine passed away. His name was John Lulich. This was to him. Second of all, I'd like to 
say thanks to all the people for coming. It's great finding back home for a change. Third of all, I'd like to thank Sam and Robin from Spaghetti Graffiti. Thanks for your support, guys. Chris Cronus, Paul Five from my trainer, First Lance Anna, Mustafa, my physio, <laughs> and this lovely crowd. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we call Tosca the quiet achiever because he's a man who never demands or asks for headlines, but in two weeks' time he's off to a Grand Prix series in Tokyo. Tosca, tell us about that. They're bringing the eight best light heavyweights in the world, myself, Rob Carmen, Ernesto Hoos, the guy who beat me, Manson Gibson, um, Ty, Otakawa, the Japanese guy I was supposed to fight, um, eight of the best in a round, round, round robin competition, whoever wins is the undisputed light heavyweight champ. We wish you well, Tosca. Thank you very much. And thanks, Chris. AA Petroleum. Firstly, I'd like to thank everybody for attending tonight. This is a show that's been in the, we've been planning it for the last 12 months. The opponents for both our main events have changed over the last three months. Three months ago in Tokyo, uh, Stan fought uh, Sataki, Masaki Sataki, for the world Mutai heavyweight title and uh, unfortunately he lost on a split decision he probably encountered one of the toughest fights he's ever had in his life um, that's why we had to reorganize the uh, this particular event we was fighting originally Maurice Smith another guy the only other guy who's beaten him and uh, but we thought we might have to take Masaki Sataki first because it was fresh and plus of what we got planned for the future so uh, I wish Stan all the best tonight and I know that you're all here to support him and thank you for supporting everybody, that, uh, supporting all our fighters, all our Australian boys. As you can see, the standard of our fighters has improved a great deal over the years and we're definitely up amongst the best fighters in the world. As Howard said, Tosk is going to Tokyo to fight in the Budokan, which seats about 20,000 people in Tokyo, and he's fighting for 100,000 US. So uh, it's, a fair, it's a very good purse. And the purses uh, in, in this sport are getting bigger and bigger because television's getting behind it and you people here are getting behind it. I'd like to thank just a few people for tonight. Our major sponsor, Triple M, because they've given us a great deal of support. They've given us a whole heap of airplay. Richard Stubbs, thank you very much, guys. Graham and Robin Burke, your help has been magnificent. Thank you very much. The Metro Nightclub, where the party's happening after this show. AO Petroleum. Fits of Flynn Publicity for giving us all the exposure, thank you very much. And just a couple of little plugs for a couple of friends of mine. Uh, a good friend of mine, Silvio Morelli, is bringing out a, a new publication called International Kickboxer, mainly because our boys have become international kickboxers, so I wish you luck with that, Silvio, so look out for that in the stands. It's got stories on all our boys in Australia and all the up-and-coming fighters. And also another good friend of mine, Tarek Solak, has got a kickboxing show next week at Catania Ballroom on the 12th of December. The show starts at 8pm and he's got some magnificent boys that are fighting there as well. Thank you very much ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. God bless Christopher Kounis.
That's what we're here for. Stan Longanides and Masaki Sataki, the world super heavyweight title. And you watched as both fighters came into the ring. Sataki on screen there now. This is Longanides, a new look, Stan the man. And the hopes of all Australians hinge on Stan Longanides here tonight. He's put his world titles up for grabs. Sataki, of course, with that last start victory over the top of Stanley. But it's back on home soil tonight for Longanides. And the man, the first fighter ever to give up a world title because he felt he never ever earned it, speaks volume for the caliber of this fellow. The national anthem. here at the Sports and Entertainment Centre here in Melbourne, Victoria. Ladies and gentlemen, just one very special guest to step in and wish both contestants good race, good wishes. Would you welcome to ringside triple champion boxer Jeff Penny. Jeff Penny. Now with Lee introducing uh, our former champion and Jeff Fennig at 29 years of old, age, uh, Masaki Sataki is undoubtedly Japan's leading kickboxer who began fighting 12 years ago and turned professional only three years ago and boy has he left the mark. He certainly has and uh, tonight will prove what sort of fighter he really is. Unfortunately, yes. um, uh, he beat Stan in Japan but there was a lot of controversy over the seven hour wait that Stan had to uh, wait before the fight but Mataki Sataki is definitely a, a good fighter and he is a champion, but we'll see what happens now. But I personally believe it's going to be a war. Well, the interesting fact out of this, Nick, is that, that, that both these fighters and Sataki of late has come out of the jet center of the United States where Stan Longanides basically got his start in the sport. So he's probably had a little bit of an insight as to uh, the Longanides tactics and the skills of Longanides over the period of time. And if that's going to be a downfall tonight, it could have been that experience to be able to uh, pick the brains of those who perhaps brought Longanides up to where we know him today. Yeah, well, um, Longanides, uh, I, I met him, met him, met up with him in 80, 88 in uh, the Jet Centre, and uh, he's come a long way since then. We all know he's the ambassador he's of the kickboxing scene in Australia. And uh, Mataki Sataki, this is the first time he's done a 12 rounder. The last fight was a five-rounder, which Stan stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with him for the whole five rounds. Even though Stan lost on points, I don't think, uh, you know, there was a, would have been a problem if it had gone any further. I, I think from what I saw, that Stan would have outsmarted him after the fifth round. But tonight we'll prove it. Tonight we'll be able to see how healthy and how fit and how strong Stan the man is. Well, our first Australian world champion. And tonight, can he retain... All those titles. The World Super Heavyweight title up for grab tonight. Let's go see it to ring Howard Lee. Representing the World Kickboxing Association, Mr. Bob Jones and his team. Representing the International Sport Karate Association, Dr. Peter Lewis and Shane Keppel. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Revenge. 12 rounds for the undisputed International Sport Karate Association and World Kickboxing Association Super and Heavyweight Championships of the World. In the blue corner, from Shinjuku, Nihon, Japan. He is 28 years of age. He's been 12 years in martial arts. Champion Karate of Japan five times. He is 185 centimeters tall. Holder UKF Muay Thai Heavyweight Championship of the World. 101 professional karate and boxing bouts. He has met Maurice Smith, Franco Sigatik among many champions of the world with Adam Watt assisting in the corner. Karai wa ni hono idol day. Kowen o anori mas. Standing 94.8 kilograms. Would you welcome from Tokyo, Japan, Masaki Sekko day. Occupying the red corner from Taylor's Lakes, Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. Wearing Collingwood colours, black and white. 33 bouts, two losses, one draw, 23 by knockout. He holds eight World American, South Pacific, Intercontinental and Australian Championships. Scaling 94.9 kilograms with Dana Goodson in the corner. Would you welcome the Genesis? of global glory and championship qualities. Defending champion, stand the man, Logan Nee! Yeah! Yeah! up for his third world championship match, Mr. Joseph Lenciana. Nick Zachariah, we're set to rumble, the boys coming into centre ring. Sataki has been on the move from the very first moment that we've come into the ring. Let's have a listen and see what Joe Lenziano has to say. To protect yourselves at all times. OK, let's touch close to the first and last round only. Let's rumble! Yeah, Joe Lenziano caught up in uh, the hype of this particular fight. And as I said before, Sataki has not stopped the whole time. Even when the Australian national anthem was on, it was bouncing around. And Longanini is looking across. Sataki, definitely a strong warrior. Very strong fighter. Well, looking at Longanini's, I haven't seen him as taut, as trim, and as fit as he's looking here tonight. I think this one is much, much better prepared for than the last time they met. Longanini's known for the power in his hands. Straight away, finds the mark, left hand. Great sportsman in Australia, all around, soccer player, boxer. Long and easy, he's hungry, and he wants to take him out real quick. Sataki seems to be just brushing him off. Oh. The right hand of Long and Edie's over the top, hits the Japanese. And he comes back with a smile. The eye of the tiger. The last time these two fought. My mail tells me that Longanides took rounds one and two, then the Japanese came back with three, four, and five. And Longanides has found range already. The Japanese walks into another one, comes back and smiles. Almost as if to say, that's the best you can give me. Although I can see a trick of blood from the Japanese mouth already. So, Longanides. Longanides is very hungry. Very keen jumping. Now you'll see Stan, in my opinion, do enormous amount of work on the thighs of the Japanese because he's just a powerful leg kicker. But then again, the Japanese, the last time I fought also, did plenty of damage on Stan's, uh, Stan's legs as well. Using the hands early in this fight. 12 two minute rounds. In fact, Longanidi just looks the fitter of the two. The Japanese, big, strong, but not tight in the body. Longanidi working to the inside of the leg. Flex out the left hand. And, and 
Shataki comes back with a grin on his face. He certainly did. He was very, very happy and smiley that round. It stands a very serious fighter first round. Very serious and coming very strong. I, I would uh, give that round differently to stand. Would you agree, Rob? I would agree, but I just, uh, I, I really am. Uh, we have a look on replay here at the moment. I'm really intrigued by uh, the grins that Sataki comes up with. He's gone straight back to his corner. Good left hand by Long and Eating's there. Comes back in, tries to kick inside. But uh, Sataki walked back to the corner as if to say, Don't worry, guys. Everything's all cool. Have a look here. You can see the smiles on the face here now. Now, whether it's the bluff, whether it's the con, Stan. Flailing punches, both uh, fighters throwing leather, but not landing. And at the moment, Longanides perhaps scoring the greater with those inside leg kicks and also scoring much better with his hands. Seconds out for round two. Joe Lanciano says to the international visitor, just hold for one second. And Longanides strolls out. Round two. Beautiful front my Gary from Stan and Man. Oh, no, no. Nice jabbing. Yeah. 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 with the hands. And that's where the damage is being done. We'll try and have a look again. He's found the inside of that left thigh. Yeah. And that's starting to really blow up on the Japanese already. Lacks a little bit in uh, lacks a little bit in height and reach. But at the, at the moment is having no problems getting through the Japanese defense. No problem whatsoever. Stan is uh, very accurate, very sharp with his combinations. You can see the Jap is, uh, Sataki is uh, very alert, very alert. Nice left thigh kick by Stan. Stan completely focused. Sataki just not finding the range with those leg kicks. Long and it, he's found it and followed it up with a good right hand. Taken on the gloves of Sataki. And interesting thing, Stan, at this present point of time, why prepared to do all the work with the hands? A very sharp stand tonight, you see. A very sharp stand. Very quick with his left jabs. I think we've got to remember, this is long and easy, town. 30 seconds left in the second round. Good, good body shots. But they were taken on the upper part. There's a good right hand from Longanides. The Japanese still stands in centre ring. Looking for the inside. Not finding it. Sataki doesn't seem to be bothered by uh, the punching power of Stan the Man at the moment. I'm watching. There's a good ploy here of Longanides. As soon as the legs start to move, the Japanese Longanides is over the top of the hands. Trying to catch him unbalanced. We know the punching power of Longanides. It's awesome. And if the Japanese lets that guard down for one second, and we saw it earlier on in the night in uh, one of the uh, early fights with uh, one of the young fellows leading for three rounds and all of a sudden letting the guard drop, the concentration lapse, and it was good night. Longanides again will capitalise on any mistake this Japanese makes. Stan the man. Now you know why they call him the man. Over the top by uh, Sataki on all occasions then. Longanides stalking in the centre of the ring. The Japanese perhaps scoring there with a the leg kick inside. Longanides prepared to flick it out. Not a lot of power in the legs of the Japanese. Very much so. Masaki Sataki is a very powerful fighter. He's, in, he's got an incredible aura about him. It, it doesn't seem to be bothering him. The punching, kicking power by Stan doesn't seem to be bothering him. He keeps on smiling and he seems to be having fun, it looks like, to my, to my eyes. Sataki's certainly having fun out there. And Longanides is I think he's red. warming up. I think the guy's warming up. Longanides is a little red under that right eye. Keep an eye on it for me. Nick Zachariah, co-commentating with me here tonight at the Sports and Entertainment Centre in Melbourne, Victoria. Sataki. Shortly, in my opinion, will have to start lifting the work rate. I believe Sataki could be displacing himself because he's, he's, he's the first 12 rounder he's done. He could be starting off slow just to pace himself with Stan. the crowd love it. Whatever. Longanides can give. Sataki at the moment can take. As a world champion in his corner. 
as far as the Queensbury rules are concerned. And there's been plenty of club work done, I dare say, in the gym with Sataki because they would know the awesome punching power of Longer than his spinning back kick. Just a little off range for Longanides. With the respect these guys have got for one another. Stork, Stork, trying to get through. As soon as the legs of the Japanese move, Longanides comes in with the hands over the top. Yes, he does. And uh, the stance, stance punching combinations are very sharp, but it seems like Sataki is wearing them pretty good on the jaw. Like, good. Very strong jawline. You'd think he's got a cast iron jaw. I know Stan's a hard puncher. Well, we've seen many Japanese fighters come out here to this country, world champions, and uh, they can take some punishment, believe me. Over the top, off the top of the shoulder of Sataki. The Australian's point of view, and I don't want to sound too parochial. The good thing, long and eating so far, even though he lacks it in range. He's found the target. Sataki stalks him. The bell. Is the round. Interesting round. Very interesting round. I, I, that was a very, very close round. It was uh, a better round for Sataki. It certainly is. And I'm just wondering to myself, you know, 12 rounders is a long amount of time. But Sataki seems to be facing himself. Well, as we said before, it was only five rounds, of course, uh, over in Japan when they last fought. So he could afford to come out and throw everything at stand but mentally physically better prepared long and he's beautiful left hand have a look at that and sataki's just taken it move back quickly puts the hands high long and with that peekaboo stance looking between the gloves and he knows uh, sometimes a defeat uh, from someone such as sataki doesn't hurt like in any sport often defeat can bring victory in many ways can Stan Longanides do his country proud and do himself proud tonight? He's got a tough opponent in Masaki Sataki. Beautiful combination by Stan, but didn't just quite catch Sataki. Sataki starting to use the legs a little higher now. Looking to the midriff. Stand there catching him with a right cross, just catching him, but doesn't seem to bother the Japanese Masaki Sataki. Love the cheeky look at Sataki. Cops one, comes back smiling. Stand, unfortunately, just not hitting in the right spot, coming across the back of the head. Oh, Sataki finding the range. Well, that one was on the button. And give it a chance, Long and Edies will march straight in. A bit around for the Japanese, the last. And Long and Edies. Loading up with the leg kicks. That one taken on top of the thigh. Almost to the hip region. A little bit of a welt. The inside of Sataki's left thigh starting to get very, very red. Both powerful boys. The kick of Sataki. Taken more to the back of Longanides. You've got to pay respect for the two boys. They're both tough, they're both strong, and they're both very fit. No telling which way this fight's going to go at this one. A little bit of stalking going on here. Longanides stands his ground in the centre of the ring. Throws him back into the neutral corner of the bell. Comes to the aid of both fighters. And looking at the corner of Sataki. Watch that thubbing hand coming over the top. I'm sure that's what he's saying. Here we go the replay. Long at Edis. Clubbing. There's that hand. Clubbing over the top. As we said before, the range just not quite there. But enough of them will do enough damage. Definitely so. Enough damage to slow him down. See the right coming across there. Bam. Stan. Caught him right on the nose then. But have a look at Sataki. Drop the hands. Have a look at you. Okay. You want to keep coming? Not there. He's a happy <laughs> person, isn't he? 
Masaki Satake, true love, warrior. Love the true attitude. Japanese warrior. He is incredible. He really is. Stan's punching power is strong. He seems to be coming into it. I don't know what to say except. Um, well, I haven't worked the Japanese out yet. I'll be honest. He's uh, he's almost got that Lexa Daisy approach, as if to say, well, hang on, you haven't seen what I can produce yet. And I, when you do, look out. I think in another couple of rounds, you'll see the Japanese fire right up. I think he's just uh, playing time here. He knows he hasn't done 12 rounds before, and he wants to pace himself. This is round five. He's looking to build up points early. And has thrown plenty of leather. Now Sataki's hands much higher. Plenty of power in that kick from Sataki. Stan comes up underneath, met on the gloves. Sataki. Working to the top of the thigh of Longanides. Longanides turning. No shin check. And Longanides just not being able to capitalize as the, the Japanese attempts the spin kick. Left and right combination, just falling into Longanides. Very good cover up from Longanides. Covers up very well with Sataki. Goes in, he covers up, knows how to move back. Longanides, I get the impression just in this round, this one might be a little bit of a breather. Good kick from Longanides. The corner bangs for Sataki. They want him to move. Now he marches up to Longanides. They can sense there might be something wrong with the Australian. And the Australian's giving it back too. I reckon this is the real for Sataki. Longanides in a little bit of trouble. Up underneath Sataki. Catches him with the top of the head. Clash of heads. Sataki looking to end Longanides early in the night. In a spot of honor. seems to be um, very strong through this round. Well, as soon as the corner started banging on the canvas, I really knew something was about to happen. Sataki raises the hand as if to say, now I'm going to start. What a fantastic round. What's to come next? What's to come next? Sataki is just starting to fire up. Stan Longanides to me in that round in a spot of bother. Dana Goodson. Slapping the face. Let's have a look. Clash of heads. Joe Lanciano forewarning them. Sataki, stand underneath. But caught a couple early Longanides, and that did the damage. Over the top, catches Sataki. Again, well, whatever Longanides can hit him with, Sataki just comes up with that wry smile again. And I'm just looking at Stan, just looking a little lazy. Not lazy from the mind, but lazy from taking just a little bit of punishment. This has been a fast and furious five rounds. And the Japanese walking away as if to say, hang on. Unbelievable. What an unbelievable round that he was. He bounces out of the corner. With a smile on his face. Longanides has an enormous amount at stake here. Every world title he holds. And Joe Lanciano just making sure that they wipe that corner. This is the, uh, the round I think Longanides is going to have to put it on the line. Because I think Sataki has had a little bit of a sniff. And we'll want to go on with it. Longanides, wide eye, flicking out the left hand. All good body shot. Sataki, very powerful leg kick. And he loves it, he wants more. You can see it on his face, he just wants more. But Stan comes across with a left cross connection. Beautiful connection by Stan. Connection, but Sataki doesn't even rock. Unbelievable. Now, Longanides, new tactics. Is he going to make the Japanese follow him round? Make him march up to him? Or is he going to stand and mix it in the centre of the ring? Good right hand from Sataki. Caught Longanides. Just getting through. going for the body. Longanides over the top of the left hand. Haven't seen the leg power of Longanides tonight yet. The right hand of Satan.
Pataki just breaks the defence of Longanetti's. Longanetti's looking for the big uppercut. Was it there? Take it on the gloves of Pataki. Longanetti's needs to put him away. He really needs to put him away bad. But I think the longer the fight goes, the better the Japanese will go. Seems that way. But this could also be a game of luck. Lazy kick from the Japanese. Longanetti's pops one on the top of the forehead. Don't know what to make of that round. Both fighters, I get the impression at the moment, uh, probably just still trying to see that one out. But I tend to agree with you, Nick. I, I really believe if Longanetti's is going to win this fight, I don't think he can let it go too much longer. Well, we're up to we're up to the seventh round and um, if Stan wants to win this fight he better pull some trick out of his hat here because if it gets any further than seven uh... Longanetti's in centre ring build up the points early in the fight but the Japanese slowly slowly just edging his way back into it I thought round five an enormous round for him and had the Australian in a spot of honor but Longanetti's has got courage has got pride Definite modern-day warriors, Rob. Both these top athletes are hard at it. They're both hungry and they both want to come out in first place. Dana Goodson. Last few words to Longanides. Once he takes the step forward, you're on your own. And it's a lonely world out there. It sure is. Longanides and Sataki, Australia and Japan. The Japanese has the ascendancy in the latter part of these few rounds. Long and he's over the top of the clubbing right hand. Slip from Long and he's no damage done. It is a slippery floor out there tonight. As I said before, the Japanese came out early over the top from Long and he's. The Japanese was out early, looking at the ring, sizing it up and even pacing it to find out how far it can walk from corner to corner the left hand through the left hand of Longanides catches him but he's still there upright this crowd coming to their feet looking for Longanides to put him away Stan, Stan the chant goes up now the corner taps uh, come from the Japanese Japanese doesn't answer though. Long and Eddie's over the top. You've got to do better. Sataki gives him just a little bit of encouragement. There's a good right hand from Long and Eddie. Good right hand from Long and The Japanese comes back with a good kick. Long and Eddie's scoring well. Just over 20 seconds left of the round. A good one for Long and Eddie's. No, thank you. Signals to Sataki. You've missed. Giving him a little bit of his own now. A very confident stand, seventh round. Watching the Japanese flicking that left thigh, or that left leg back very, very quickly now. Some good marks. Longanides is starting to do some good work inside. Dying stages of this round. And a better one for the Australian. To the outside. Trying to take the legs from underneath. And I'd have to say, good round for Longanides. And for the first time in the fight, Sataki now is just starting to look a little drained. I think Sataki's left leg is definitely hurt. You can see the blue and red bruising on his leg. But definitely a strong bout there for Stan. I would have given that round to Stan. Eighth round. Let's have a look on replay. And good right hand. Again, we see the leg kick to the outside. But the damage is done on the inside of Sataki and if we can pick it up on replay we might be able to see Stan let go with a shot because he's been doing a considerable amount of work a lot of checking with that left leg of Stan bringing the knee up high have a look at the inside of that left thigh of Sataki there it comes doesn't look much a kick like that Nick but those freaking little kicks there's a lot of power in them and after you've popped a few of those you definitely start to feel a bit of pain in your thigh no thank you referee and Longanides rushing out of the corner. The this crowd. is round eight. 
crowd's cheering Stan on. As you can hear in the background, the crowd is going crazy, and Stan just wants to drop this opponent of his, Masaki Sataki, still strong. Try to take the legs out from under Stan. A good contact with the fire of Longanides. Good right hand, flicking left hand, and good body shots coming from Sataki. And Longanides says, you haven't given me your best shot either. Sataki's corner, urging, banging the canvas. And Longanides walking forward all the time. High kick over the top, long on Eddie's ducky, good vision. And we're starting to see long on Eddie's doing all the walking up. Sataki has slowed down. Lip and tie a little bit more sloppier than before. Just watch Stan a glance down at that inside fight. Immediately goes for it. He knows where the damage is being done. <laughs> Again, had a glance down. Yep. And Sataki. Every time Long and Eddie fires out the left hand, lifts up that left leg. 35 seconds left in this round eight. High kick of Sataki, taken on the shoulder of Long and Eddie. Long and Eddie's over the top, gets away out of trouble. You can hear the corner of the Japanese banging. Got to lift the work rate. Long and Eddie's doing well in the round again. Flick out the left hand. Sataki starting to look a little tired. Oh! But Sataki holds his breath. Cops one on the chin again from Longanides and signals, I'm still here. Hey. Definitely it was loaded, Nick, but it never came. Definitely a happy couple of punches, eh? Good round for Longanides. Two happy fighters. Love the feeling of getting punched in the head, I think. Unbelievable. True modern-day warriors. Matsaki Sataki and Stang Longanides. Ninth round. Let's have a look and see if we can see where the uppercut, uh, the uppercut came from Longanides. And then followed it up again, and the Japanese signaled. That hand coming over the top. Must be tough, the Japanese. Hasn't even marked hardly on the face. And has taken some enormous shots from the Australian. Stalking, poking out the left hand long and eighties. There it is. It comes back. We won't see it. Long and eighties in the corner. And Dana Goodson. His mentor at the Fitzroy All Stars gym here in Melbourne. Sataki. This is round nine. Nine of twelve. Notice as long and Edies made a lot of noise. Take it pretty well on the gloves. Again, take it on the gloves. Stan's probably just trying to wear him out a bit now on the ninth round. Long and Edies is not marked to the midriff at all. And the Japanese just coming over the top, looking to land some big bombs. Long and Edies just looking, looking a little bit relaxed for mine. Stanley, you've got to get those hands up. That's better. The Japanese is the type of, of fighter, Nick. Give him a sniff and I think you'll open the door for him. I think so. Stan's hands have dropped considerably. Now the peekaboo stands. The corner. Oh, Sataki signalling. Time to move. Left hand to the body. Left hand over the top of Longanides. Again, but the Japanese can take those. Try to size Longanides up. Took the kick, took the punch. Stan's got to keep his hands up. I can see Sataki lining him up. Stan every now and then just has a bit of a glance down at that thigh. I just get the feeling that Stan doesn't keep that peekaboo stance up. The Japanese is going to find range. He knows. Probably down on points. Longanides comes up and has a look at Cops one and again. Sataki comes back in. And it doesn't look a lot in them, but when you're that big and you're copying those on the beak all the time, they take their toll. 
Longanides' hands blow. A little tired looking. Sloppy. Pops the left hand. Well done. Where is round 10? I hope. I hope. And I try not to be too uh, too parochial in this case. I hope that was a breather for Longanides because he came out looking very, very tired. Uh, Lomonides has been trying more combinations, I believe, than Musaki Sataki, and he has been put in out heaps. I mean, you know, this is a really important fight for Stan. I don't think the crowd really realises how much emphasis and importance goes into winning this fight. I mean, Stan has to win this fight. Well, to tell you the pressure that's being portrayed here tonight, to be quite honest, these two fighters are the types of fighters that end fights in three to six rounds. Tonight, we're now up to ten. Now, neither fighter can put one another away. They've both taken some enormous shots, and I think that just tells you straight away the respect that these two guys have got the punishment that they can take. You've got to respect the two boys. Sataki. This will be the round. Sataki will come out with guns blazing. Round 10 here at the Taking in the air the deep breaths. And it's on again. Whoa, that's it. Beautiful left cross by Stan Longanides. Stan Longanides quickly, quickly comes back. And come forward, the Japanese corner's yelling. Come forward, come forward. Well, that's easy to say when you're turning around and walking into a formidable opponent like Longanides. Looping left hand, mile up the mark. Sataki looks underneath, tries to work for the body, drags Longanides across with that left hand. The corner of Longanides yelling at jab, 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 jab. Again, Longanides looks at the leg of Sataki. And Sataki gets a sniff. Longanides. And a spot bottle into the neutral corner. Comes back. The Japanese spins out. Longanides over the top. Longanides don't want to give him nothing. He just wants to keep on fighting. Oh, what a moment he looks in trouble. He just comes back. The crowd urging Longanides on. Again works to that five. The inside leg. Uppercut of Sataki. Off the mark. Longanides stalking again. I personally believe Sataki needs a knockout to win this because Stan is way ahead on him on points. From what I can see, Stan scored more on him through these rounds than he has up from Sataki. The noise you can hear in the background is the corner of Sataki. Wanting him to move, uh, to move in. The bell ends round 10. That's a target signaling to the crowd. That was my round. I have my doubts. It was a very close uh, round, that one. I, they both scored a lot evenly in the points, I would say. Well, the Japanese taking the early points for mine, and Longanetti's answering back. But... Uh, I think uh, what Stan's got to do, and I think you summed it up pretty well, good left hand, what Stan's got to do now is just keep out of trouble and just build up those points. Goodson was screaming to him early, jab, 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 move and jab. Because I think, uh, to be quite honest, Nick, every shot that Sataki's taken has been pretty good from Stan, and he's still there. He's a tough boy, Sataki. And vice versa for that matter too, for Longanides. Yeah, both tough boys. Sataki seems to have a cast iron jaw. Round He's got some nice left hooks and rights off uh, Stan. He smiles at Stan. This is round 11. This is a favour for Stan. And I think uh, Stan, I have a feeling right now that Stan's going to just go nuts in this round. Let's well, see what happens. He's taken his time to come out. And the Japanese quick flicks out. Looks up for a, line, for a right hand to follow it up. Left shot to the body. Longanides over the top of that left hand. That's the punch that's been scoring well for him. The Japanese now starting to work on the leg of Longanides. I thought I would have seen a little bit more use of the legs in this fight. Longanides says, sorry. No damage done. 
I'm going to do the damage to the inside of that fire. And it's starting to really blow up the Satakis. A tired stand. A very tired Longanitis. 11 rounds over the top. Incredible explosion there from Stan. Just seems to just explode every few seconds. He just lets out. Country, don't do it in yours. Yes, he was on the I don't think there was much in it. Not a lot in it at all. Another fighter giving an inch in centre ring, stalking, looking for the one that could end it. Good left hand, Longanides scoring over the top. The Japanese doesn't find range, that one comes through. And the Japanese saying he's hanging on to the back of me. Those round leg kicks starting to get a little bit tired of the Japanese. Long and Edie saying, no, nah, no thanks. No power in those. I can take as many of those as you want to give me. Comes back now. It's Sataki. It's Sataki. Drops the head and scores. Long and Edie's transition with a good one. Long and Edie's left thigh is definitely a red, isn't it? And Sataki's corner. The impression I got there was that they felt they won the round. Stan very strong, keeps on coming. Dana Goodson taking the pressure off uh, Longanides' legs. And you can see Longanides, with all due respects, a little distressed. Here we have them on replay again. Good inside leg kick from Sataki. Coming from the bad leg. Just throws him away. <laughs> Sataki saying, that's not right. But uh, nothing much in it at all. Sataki wasn't impressed with that, I'd say. Well, what's round 12 going to give us? Is it going to go to a judge's decision or will we see a knockout? Seconds up. This is it. This the world this Super is Heavyweight and Final. And Sato Rumble. Sato Rumble. The Heavyweight Championship of the world. signaling, come out and get me. Joe Lanciano. Brings the both fighters together. They touch gloves. Bell signals. Round 12. Sataki opens up. Leg kicks. Long and Edie's over the top. And underneath. Over the top again from Long and Edie's. The Japanese looking for an uppercut in close. And Long and Edie's hangs on. Marciano. Joey bringing fighters together. Longanides coming out of the top, looking to use the punching power. The Japanese working underneath with the legs. Can't get through Longanides. I must admit, Sataki looks a little fresher. He's a very fresh, healthy man, I say, uh, Rob. Sataki seems to be very fit, still very fit, not sweating a great deal. Compared to Stan. Stanley, get the hands up. Sataki's got a snip. So far, this round's his. Longanides looking for an opening. Is he going to let him wear himself out? Sataki finds range. Now Longanides comes back at him. Good round for Sataki. Longanides exhausted. Sataki now drops the hands. This allows Longanides to come back at him. Again, looking for the shot across the top. Doesn't find it. The right hand finds the mark. Doesn't slow the Japanese down any at all, Nick. Not at all. Stan's a very tired person at the moment. But he seems to, seems to keep dropping his hand. I'm a bit worried that... Um, Left hand of Sataki spikes the mark. Longanides looks for the inside. Kick to the midriff. Right hand of Sataki spikes Longanides back on the ropes. Both fighters dogged. Left and right combinations. Longanides stands in centre ring. Absolutely exhausted. Sataki can't put away. And Sataki signals the fight's his. It goes 12 rounds. I'll leave it to the referees. I will not touch this at all. It's a very tight fight. I, I really, I'll have to agree with you. It's uh, toe for toe. And sad for sad, as they say. And uh, Don't go away. We'll be reading out the scorecards. 
Tarsus Madridis coming in the centre ring. And like us, doesn't know which way to go here, I'm sure. I know his heart will be with Stan Longanides, as will every Australian. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, Did plenty of work early enough to build up points for Mike. Two, a little bit of laps around and round five. And the so Japanese come back and then again come back in round seven and eight. And the Japanese just finished on the pressure for Mike. I think we might go centre ring, because I'm sure Howard Lee will know the score before we do. And as we said before, Stan Longanides putting an awful lot at stake here in his hometown of Melbourne. The boy from Taylor's Lakes, will he continue in the fight game? He must win this. Sataki, smiling, quite happy, quite convinced that this world super heavyweight title is his. A very close fight tonight, uh, Rob. A very close fight, but which way it's going to go, we'll only have to wait and find out. Japanese television out here as well, and you can see Stan the man in the corner there. And... Uh, very, very weary. He's given it everything. He's worked twice as hard as he has for any other encounter. Could not have done any more Stan coming has, into this fight. Stan has had a lot of pressure on him uh, since he lost against Taki in Japan. And Well, when you have a record as imposing as that, and you're at the top for so long, I mean, you come out of the public just expect you to win every time you step into the ring. And like, you know, when you've got challenges coming at you from every country, and as quick as they come, it's a big ask. It Sataki, Sataki in his corner moves to the centre of the ring. Whether this is the site, whether this is what uh, I think the referees have made up their decision now. Goes to the neutral corner, goes over to Longanides' corner. And Longanides with his back to him so far. And the height, no one has moved from their seat. Everyone has stood as one here at this entertainment center i estimate the crowd between 7,000 upwards both fighters embrace in center ring the respect former japanese world boxing champion there in sataki's corner and the referee joe lanciano has both fighters and i i still stay i can't pick a, a winner at this stage Let's go centre ring. Let's see what uh, Joe Lanciano, see whose hand's going to be risen here. Back, Howard Lee asking for the ring to be cleared. Can everybody move back, please? No, just away from there, please, guys. Sorry, Tom. Everybody, you're in camera range. Thank you. Please move back. And Ladies and gentlemen, here's Howard Lee. Judge, could I have the music off, please, Bill? It's very close, this. Ladies and gentlemen, Judge Bryce Bertwistle, Australia, has it 117. 115 in favour of Stan the Man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Judge Taro Wakabe Ashi from Japan has Stan the Man 110, Sataki 120. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the final card, the deciding card from George Sakurai, Australia. He gives it 115 Stan, 115 Sataki, a drawn contest. Still, the heavyweight champion of the world, Stan the Man, Longanidas. Well, three judges, an enormous margin from the Japanese judge of 120 to 110, and only two points from the Australian. 117 to 115. Interesting. The Australians see it tighter. The Japanese saw a 10-point margin. I don't know whether personally myself I could see a 10-point margin in that fight. No, no, I don't think. But then again, I don't fill out the scorecards. From Australia, we will top up the half of Satoki. And at what? Can you please come forward? Could everybody move away, please? We're on national television. Definitely a fitter person, Satoki, than stand through this. Um, I think that's where the um, the Japanese refer, uh, the Japanese judge probably was a little bit more kinder in the points in that in that round. Well, we're talking about three judges, three different vantage points around the ring. Mm. Um, I suppose we're lucky. We've got the monitor here in front of us to be able to pick and choose. But uh, as I said before, I would not personally have given it ten points. I saw it a closer contest than that. The Japanese finishing off the better. Saki said, okay, come on, wasn't he fantastic? All the way from Tokyo, a marvellous competitor, a very gracious sportsman. 
Will there be a rematch? Well, I suppose uh, the score still Sataki's way, isn't it? Certainly is. Stan, the man, long and eighties, retains his world heavyweight titles and put them on the line tonight, which I thought personally was a pretty bold move. But I suppose in your home, in your own hometown, your own home crowd behind you, and we'll go centre ring now and just see what Howard Lee can get out of the uh, Masaki Sataki in English. Uh, uh, I, uh, I want them. one more fight. <laughs> you want to fight more? Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> the picture tells the story. Big Zachariah Sataki in there is quite, quite happy, smiling. Adam, you speak both English and Japanese. What was the feeling in the corner after the decision? Unhappiness or just shock? How would you record that? Definitely shocked, but uh, just set it up for a bigger rematch in Tokyo, I guess. Um, we thought... Uh, 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 we like sportsmanship. Uh, Japan, Australia. Very nice. Thank you very much. Well, I get the impression there that there won't be a rematch. I may be wrong if the body language tells me something. The interpreter saying uh, the rematch in uh, Japan. The little Japanese uh, trainer there, of course, Stand. being able to understand a bit of English. Your most grueling battle in Quickly your career. Quickly bounced on that. I thought Definitely the first one was hard, but um, listen, hey, don't, don't, don't be like that because, um, you know, I thought that the fight was pretty close because in the early part of the fight, we were communicating in the corner. We thought we were winning the early rounds, but there's no doubt about it. He finished strong. He finished strong. And I take, I'm not taking nothing away from him. I wouldn't have been disappointed, honestly, if it went against me. But that's why the judges saw it, and I'm very fortunate. I've been blessed again to save my title, but don't hold that against me. I put my heart out, as you can see, and again, I refuse to go down. Well, Stan Longanetti is still very distressed in Centre Ring, and still emotionally. As you can see... A little bit taken back. As you can see, Suffolk is definitely a worthy contender. Uh, some of the punishment I took, trust me, I felt like going down, but you guys inspired me. Um, to get a crowd like this, I couldn't let you guys down. I'm really sorry. Sure. Sure. Sure, it's always uh, the most pre prestigious way to win by getting a knockout. And I've had my fair share during my career. As you can see, the competition is getting a lot tougher. I want to thank the promoter, Chris Crones, for putting on an excellent show again. I want to thank my team. I couldn't be here without my team. All you people. And I also want to thank some people that have showed some... Uh, overwhelming enthusiasm to get behind my career. I love them very much. I'm talking about uh, Graham and Robin Burke from Village Ray Show and the Kirby's, the Kirby family. And for people like Kerry Packer and James Packer to take time out to come and sh see our show like this, we are very, very fortunate. I thank you very much. I thank my Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ. Thank you. Well, a drawn contest here at the Melbourne Entertainment Centre for the World Super Heavyweight title. Stan Long and Eddie's retains that title. Nick Zachariah. I suppose when we look at things, uh, the Japanese did certainly finish the uh, the better and the quicker than Longanides, but Longanides, of course, still retaining the title. Will he go to international rules, or will he turn around and keep it under his title here in Victoria? It's definitely hard to say whether Stan will go into national rules, because that is Sataki's uh, better fighting methods, is international rules. Personally, I don't think Stan will fight international rules against Sataki, but it would be a definite sight to watch if he does change his mind and go for it. All right, it's been an enormous night here at the Melbourne Entertainment Centre. I hope you've enjoyed all the action. It's been a tremendous card put on by Christopher Cronus. Until we next meet, Nick Zachariah, thanks for working with us. Thank it's been you a very pleasure. Much, Rob. Okay, well done. We'll join you next time at a kickboxing match or bout near you.